Oh, that's awesome. There's one. Yeah. You bet she may have got him. Hi everyone, welcome to episode three of Herod Outdoors video cast. And today we're gonna to be talking about some backcountry fishing. And again, I've got my son Tyler Herod here with me and I'm Richie Herod, producer of the Northwest Outdoorsman and Herod's Cookhouse Field the Table. And like always, we'd like to invite you to follow us along on YouTube. You can get automatic notifications whenever uh, we post a new video. Um, another thing I haven't mentioned to you before is make sure you follow us on our Facebook pages at Herod Outdoors LLC and Herod's Cookhouse. Um, you can get our recipes there and kind of follow us along as we uh, go out on our adventures or making new shows or have some information to pass on to you. So be sure to follow us there. Well, one of the things we like to do is go into the backcountry from time to time and we've done a lot of um, backcountry hunting but one of the things that's a lot of fun to do is do some backcountry fishing yeah yeah go up hike somewhere find a small lake or yeah pond. absolutely and we're really fortunate here in the Pacific Northwest because we have so many mountain ranges uh, where we can do that don't we oh yeah we have more than more than yeah. one can count there's so many lakes it's kind of hard to believe and, yeah you know here we're on the east slope of the Cascades, but if you go into the Blue Mountains of Eastern Oregon, or you go into the Southern Cascades, or the Coast Range, or the Olympic Mountains, there's all kinds of places to go uh, fishing in those high lakes, and it's really a lot of fun. And uh, a lot of them are stocked with rainbows or cutthroat trout, um, and they're, they're really fun to catch. Oh yeah. yeah. So um, one of the episodes that we made a while back was a bank fishing episode and we uh, spent some time up at uh, Merritt Lake and we tried to go to Lost Lake, which we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, and then we also fished up at Conconelli. Um, you might check that out on our YouTube channel. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and you know, for the majority of fishermen, I really think fish by way of bank. I yeah, think. well, I mean, most of my friends, you know, yeah. they can't afford a boat, so they fish on the yeah. bank. Yeah, I think you know, we grew up that way when 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 I was a kid, and um, you've been fortunate because we've kind of had a boat ever since you were a kid. Yeah. But, but you know, the large majority of people fish from the bank, and it's a lot of fun, and you can be successful uh, fishing from the bank. And obviously, when you go into the high country, that's that's where you're gonna. That's where you're gonna fish from the bank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna pack a boat in yeah. at a lot of these places. Although if you're if you're tough and you think you could do it, you might be able to pack in a float tube or something like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, that might Maybe. Be, might be kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might be. <laughs> get in the get in the boat, you'd be freezing your butt off just because the water's so cold. Yeah. yeah. It's just hard to hard to think about packing a whole lot of weight into some of these places because you know the elevation gain's pretty. Oh yeah pretty significant yeah, yeah they're steep some some trails are yeah. absolutely just cra crazy yeah. steep they're real steep and um, so you don't want to pack a whole lot into there so yeah so this episode that we made um, Bobby Loomis joined us and uh, our daughter my daughter Michelle Tyler's sister Michelle and so the four of us went into Merritt Lake now Merritt Lake is um, along Highway 2 as you go from Wenatchee, Leavenworth, and head over uh, the pass, Stevens Pass, if you're up past uh, the turnoff to Lake Wenatchee going west, and Merritt Lake's up on the right, and there's lots of lakes. It just so happens we picked that one as the place to go. Uh, it's not too bad of a hike. Uh, you can do it in a day. And so we went up there to, uh, to, to bank fish, and, and uh, um, back in the day when I worked for the Forest Service, uh, a friend of mine, it was probably back in the 90s, a friend of mine uh, was a fishery biologist and they would do these high lake surveys so that they would know, you know, yeah, what's up there, what's up there, what fish are up there. And, and uh, so we went up and uh, back when I was working in those days and we, you'd have a timed uh, amount of time you fish. So you fish for an hour and you would 
catch as many fish as you could catch and release. Yeah. And then you would measure them. You'd measure them and then uh, the species and you'd fill us all out on a form. And then um, between the Forest Service, probably in the Department of Fish and Wildlife, I'm sure he was sharing the information with the state, but that would be a way to say, you know, how those lakes are doing in terms of their stocking, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was, a lot, it was a lot of fun. And so this was in the 90s when I was up there. Yeah. And so I told these guys, I said, well, I've been there before. There's some good fishing. I said, especially Lost Lake, which is further past Merritt. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, we, we got to go there because they're big cutthroats. You know, they're like 13 inches, 14 inches, maybe bigger. And oh, yeah, we're all excited about doing that. Got so, real excited. <laughs> <laughs> so we go up there and I, I don't know, you think it was like June? It was June probably. Yeah, I think it was early. Yeah, it had to be June. It was early yeah, summer, I, late spring. Yeah, exactly. And in and, and the Cascades, you know, um, the snow depends on the year. Sometimes the snow doesn't come off until into the month of June. And in fact, we we got into snow, didn't we? Yeah, we we had a very peak when we were going over the, the little ridge line. It's just crazy snow. We were yep. slipping and sliding all the way down. Yeah, trying to find Lost Lake. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we decided to go, and I think it was sometime in June. And so we went up there and parked at the trailhead and and packed our stuff up and uh, headed up the up the mountain to Merritt Lake and then from there we were going to go to Lost Lake and so we'll we'll tell you a little bit about what happened with that but uh, maybe first it might be worthwhile to tell folks you know how we prepared for that trip oh yeah you know and uh, most of the things we're going to talk about are easily found at your local sportsman's warehouse so just head on in there and they can set you up for just about everything that we're talking about well everything that we're talking about I'm sure they have uh, just about everything yeah. that you're going to need no, for we, sure. Yeah. Don't you think? And a little bit of extra stuff. And there's sure. probably some other things that you didn't plan on buying, but that's okay. Um, it's kind of like a kid in a candy store when yeah. you're going there. So, <laughs> so you went, oh, I just got to have it. You got to have it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I think a, a good day pack is uh, something that you want to think about using. Uh, we use Nimrod packs. A, a good day pack, something you can take at least a gallon of water. You want to have something that you can purify water with. Yeah. In case you find yourself up there longer than you want, or if you drink more than a gallon of water. Um, you know, pur purifying pills, kind of a last resort. It's better to pump, pump water with a filter. You can just do so much better um, with that, it's not so hard on your system. There's all kinds of brands out there. and I don't have any particular one that I would tell you, but sometimes I really like, if you're gonna be in the back country for a long time, I like a gravity fed filter. They work really well. You can fill up a large container, just hang it up, and then whenever you want water, you just, you know, put it into whatever smaller container you're doing. That way you don't have to pump all the time. Yeah, so makes, it's, makes it easy. It's really easy that way. So anyway, so water, um, and then some food, and again, you want to take enough food in case you have to stay longer than you planned. Always be prepared for the backcountry. Always, yeah. Always. And um, one fun thing that we do is we take some of our seasoning and to, you know, prepare to eat some fish. So yeah, I mean, you're going, what, up there, you're going up there to fish, so you're hoping to catch yeah. some fish and maybe get some lunch or something. Yeah, you did the cooking on this trip. What did you, what did you take along? Um, well, I mean, we had the jet boil. Yeah, do, it's, it's right here. Yeah, we do a jet boil. That's one of our things. Again, something you can get at Sportsman's Warehouse. These are really nice. Oh yeah, those things. Yeah, those things work well. I mean, and then we just had a little frying pan right on top of it, and then we just threw our fish in there. Threw a little bit of our seasoning that we have here, um, right on, just right on top of it, and just fried them that way. Yep. Yeah, we our, we just took some of our lemon and dill fish seasoning. Just a great flavor and, oh, yeah. uh, and a little bit, I think I threw in a little bit of butter. Yeah, just just so the fish yeah. skins weren't sticking too yeah, much, probably. Yeah, exactly, and so, Tyler, when you watch that episode, you'll see we, um, when we did finally make it over close to Lost Lake, why we <laughs> sat down on this kind of overlook, and, yeah. and Tyler did the cooking, it was really good. So. Yeah, yeah, the cliff. The cliff. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, things like the jet boil, um, and this is another way to purify water, obviously, is you can, you know, boil your water rather than pump it. So, so you know, water, food, and then another important thing is to have some way to make fire. Now, if you're going into the backcountry in 
fire season when fire danger is high, you need to make sure you understand whether you can make fire or not, but also um, know that if it's an emergency, you know, if you get wet and um, it's a life or death situation, you want to be able to make fire. And all I would tell you is just be careful when you're uh, making fire, no matter what part of the season is, and make sure you put your fire out before you leave. So those are kind of your, your basics. And other than that, you want to just take um, some items that you can be comfortable for the day. Now, layering's important. Yeah. You Always. know, t we wore our our nice fishing shirts. Oh yeah, which are really nice. I mean, they're not too thick or anything, but you can always throw a couple long sleeve shirts under it, which yeah. is nice. They dry easy, don't they? Oh they yeah. get wet. Yeah, yeah, and they breathe pretty easily they too. They breathe so. pretty well. So they were, the, this kind of material is, is nice, you know, just a good fishing shirt. Get all kinds of them. This is a Columbia brand, but there's all kinds of brands. And again, if you went to Sportsman's Warehouse and said, hey, can you help me find a fishing shirt? You could find one. The other thing about them is they're UV resistant. So, you know, you don't get sunburned yeah, through them. Yeah. Um, I guess that's something else, you know, when you're at higher elevations, you, your um, UV light at that elevation is a little more intense. You can get burned a lot easier oh, yeah. up there, and, you know. And people underestimate when there's snow up on the top, uh -huh. uh, you get burnt under your chin just from the reflection yeah. of the snow. So, yeah, that's something to always think about. Yeah, so having long sleeve shirt, not only for the bugs, but just to protect yourself from the sun and maybe a little bit of sunscreen. Yeah, definitely. You know, at, least, at least a small little bottle like that Take big. a little bit of something or, you know, slather yourself up before you go. <laughs> it's got to be important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should say something about that. You know, make sure you have layers, you know, maybe like a stocking cap and a, and a really good pair of hiking boots. Uh, something that gives you some support but aren't too heavy that, you know, you're going to yeah. be tired when you get yeah. up there. Yeah. Now, one thing we used uh, were just our regular fishing rods. Um, we had, you know, two-piece spinning rods, mm -hmm. and we just broke them down and stuck them in our packs, yeah. and it seemed to work pretty well. Yeah, it was pretty simple. I mean, they're lightweight, so I mean, it's like yeah, easy. there's not a lot of weight. And an another thing you could do is get a, you know, inexpensive telescoping rod. It's very compact because they telescope to a small size. Another thing that might be kind of fun to do is, is take a fly rod, a three-piece uh, fly rod up there. It might be kind of fun to play um, fish on that as well. So that's another option. Um, and then, of course, your uh, fishing gear. Now, one thing we do is we use these little Plano tackle boxes, you can, or any brand for that matter. Again, something that you can pick up at Sportsman's. And it has several containers. And some of the things that we put in here are just some uh, split shot, uh, various kinds of uh, spinners, which I'll talk about in flies. And it's good to have a little bit of extra fishing line, mm -hmm. maybe some swivels, just a variety of things. So you don't, you're not packing a tackle box, but enough stuff that when you go up there, you don't go, oh dang, I, I can't make a, I can't fix a broke line or I can't, you know, it's always be good to be prepared. Could be anything, yeah. You want to, you know, it might be something's working better than another, and so, so you use this. It's a pretty steep climb. I think that particular trail is probably, I don't know, a couple thousand feet in elevation gain. Yeah, and just just a couple miles. Yeah, it's a couple miles, so it's pretty steep. So you you really don't want a whole lot of um, weight when you're going up there. Yeah. All right, so we hiked into Merritt, and one thing that uh, we wanted to do was just try a variety of things. Now, one thing about Merritt Lake is the fish are pretty small. It's kind of overpopulated. Yeah, I mean, it seems like I mean, it seems like you got a lot of bites, but yeah, they just were a just a lot of small fish. Yeah, they were just a lot. Of, like we had to down, downgrade our hooks like three or four times just to try to catch them. Yeah, I think there's no there's no limit. Yeah. And no, no size limit and no number limit on merit because I think what, you know, they want to do is try to get those numbers down so the fish will actually grow a little bit. Yeah. So it's, it's overpopulated. So when you find a lake like that and the fish are really small, you've, you've got to downsize your gear. And, and again, that's why it's a good idea to take a, a variety of things. So what we were using, um, a variety of Max products that we like, a smile blade fly. These work really well. They have a, a little smile blade on the top here, one of the 0.8 size smile blades, a couple of beads, and then a variety of colors. You know, I've got a couple colors here. We've got a variety of sizes here. We've got green and white and pink. 
and again, just like uh, we've talked before, you sort of want to, you know, match the hatch, whatever it is that they're feeding on, mm -hmm. and kind of pay attention, right? Yeah. As you're going up there to see what's on the water, and uh, and then the way you rig these up is just time direct to your line. You can use these floats, these uh, bobber floats that you just put a little bit of water in them. So there's your weight for casting, and uh, we use a pretty long leader, you know, like 48 inches. Yeah really at long at least on merit even these flies were a little too big for yeah i mean the fish yeah they, the fish weren't even as wide as my hand so i mean it, we had to we had to adjust several times right. another thing works pretty well are the promise keepers i got a couple different sizes and colors here so i've got promise keepers again these were a little too large they're weighted which is kind of nice they have Part of the attraction attractants is the the weights mm -hmm. that are in the in it, and plus they have a smile blade, so they cast really well. And if you got bigger fish, I mean, there's nothing like throwing a spinner type yeah. bait at high lake fish. Oh yeah, no, they hit it hard. They hit so. it hard, but again, uh, we were getting tapped, but they couldn't hook up because the fish were so small. So. What'd you end up using? Sonic bait fish. Yeah, I ended up using a small, the <laughs> smallest sonic bait fish we had. Yep. Ended up catching quite a few off of that, so that was fun. This, the sonic bait fish is like a blade bait, and you can see on here that you've got a couple different spots, uh, points of attachment. You can put the hook in the back, you can put uh, uh, two hooks on and put your point of attachment here in the center. Yeah. How were you fishing it? I had it up. Uh, Did you have it off the nose? Yeah, I had the line off the nose, and I just had the one hook and the one, one double hook, hook back. back. Yeah. And I think you had the eighth ounce, which is the smallest one. Yeah. And if I remember right, the colors you're using were orange and white. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so, or y yeah. yellow and white, one of that combination. Yeah, right. And so where, where did you have, you had most of your luck, it seems like, kind of over by that rock slide. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I was... Everyone else was on the, there, there was a little stream running into the Merritt Lake and that's where everyone else was fishing. So I kind of scaled some rocks, got onto the rock slide and then kind of just casted up the bank line and I got a, got a few fish right there. Yeah, so the fish were kind of in the, in the shallows there, probably in the weed line. Yeah. I'm assuming smaller fish, if there were bigger fish, were probably trying to hide from the larger ones yeah. or they were getting where there was warmer water. I mean, there's a variety of reasons yeah, probably. probably. Um, but anyway, that's where they were, and, and yeah, well, they're about this big. Uh, yeah, or, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest ones we got were probably six inches at the most. Yeah, at, we, the, at the most. Yeah, we kept, you know, we kept a few um, of the six inches. We didn't keep the real small ones, no. like not much to eat there. So no, yeah. we kept the six inches, and you know, we wanted we wanted to you know eat in the woods because that that's part of the fun. Yeah, you know? yeah, it makes the whole experience. It's a pretty fun experience when you when you do that. You catch your own lunch you know have and then you have your shore lunch oh so. yeah and it's fresh too you can't yeah. you can't beat fresh fish you, you really can't yeah and so uh i don't know we probably fished there for a couple hours yeah i mean not not super long just a couple yeah. an hour or two maybe three at the most yeah it was really beautiful spot tyler said there's a little stream coming in and we were kind of there and bobby tried a, a, a bunch of different things yeah. and then tyler went over in their spot and michelle she she was trying the flies for a long time, and, and I think she finally changed to the sonic bait fish yeah, too. But yeah, <laughs> she was having trouble catching them. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Michelle, uh, as you know, uh, is more of a hunter than she is a fisherman. She likes to fish; she just doesn't get a chance to do it very often. So that's you know that's kind of part of the issue. Um, but uh, you know, she just hasn't been able to go as, as many times as we have but yeah. that's okay she yeah, did right. she did great and had a great time and yeah so so then the adventure started yeah gosh trying to find <laughs> lost lake so you know how it is i don't know if, about you guys but if you've ever it's been you know a lot of years before you you know go back to a spot and it had to have been 15 years since i was there yeah at least it may, <laughs> maybe 20. I can't remember for sure how long it had been since I was there. I, I, maybe closer to 20. I don't know. <laughs> and what I what I remembered about it was when you got to Merritt, you know, that you just head up the trail and go over a little pass and then you would just one off. It was steep down the other side. Well, that's all well and good, except for when we got up 
above Merritt Lake, then there were snow patches. And so yeah. the trail that we had been following pretty well, you know, disappeared under snow patches. And so now I'm going on memory of, you yeah. know, what, oh, is it down that little draw or, yeah. what, you know, what, and I'm looking at a map and it's like, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, and then we then we take a wrong turn at we one. Took a wrong turn. We took a wrong turn at one point and ended up way off on different trails. So we had to turn around, go back, and uh. they, they weren't very happy with me. <laughs> I kept going. Well, I think it's this way, and then I think the trail that we were going on was taking us out of there. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, this can't be it. So we went back and um, we found a trail that you know, went down. There's actually two ways to get to Lost Lake. One is the way that, you know, I remember, and that's the hardest way. And that's the way we went when I went there before. We went down this little chute. And then if you actually um, stay to the right of that, there's a, there's an easier way to get down there. And, and I had never been that way. And it, so it wasn't, you know, fresh in my memory yeah. or anything. So, so I said, well, I'm pretty sure we go off that. So we went down that <laughs> yeah, it was snowy we, and sliding. We went down that chute and we get down there about halfway down the mountain. I think Bobby cut his arm on a stick. He yeah. looked like he was, you know, about bleeding to death, but it was just a scratch. We come to an uh, impasse, didn't we? we? Yeah. A spot where you weren't going to go anymore. Oh, no. And there was, I mean, the one place that you could have gone was a rock slide that had just a little creek running right down it from the snow mountain. Like, there's no chance you're getting down it was that. Like, <laughs> well, I don't know. There's logs and they were all wet and snow and, and, and it just it was almost a cliff. And uh, so there we were overlooking Lost, Lost Lake. Lake. And I, you know, I'm telling these guys, oh, we, we just need to go a little more, you know, because there's some big fish in there. It'll, it'll be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Never made it. <laughs> no, that was kind of the end of it. So we, we just stopped there on the cliff and there was a nice flat spot like I mentioned before. Yeah, I mean, we set up our jet boil and made our lunch right yeah. there. Tyler cooked up the lunch and ate some fish and, and uh, man, it, it was awesome. I mean, you talk about pretty, I mean, that's, the, I think that's the rewarding part of, you know, doing this backcountry stuff is just the scenery. Oh yeah, and like, and you go into a place that hardly anyone has ever been to, too, and it's yeah. just beautiful. There's just not many people go up there and it was gorgeous, and I, I think we were the first ones up there that spring because there, oh. there weren't any tracks. Yeah, we had to have been. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing the trail break. And, yeah. You know. But anyway, so we turned around and went back out. And when I was a kid in eastern Oregon, we used to fish Van Patten Lake in the blues there, just uh, between Baker and North Powder. You go up into the blues. Uh, uh, and uh, Van Patten and, um, oh shoot, I'm forgetting the name of the other lake that was close by, but we would, my dad would take me up there when, when I was a kid and we'd, you know, fish these lakes. Mm -hmm. and there's some funny stories about that. I'll, I'll tell a couple real quick. So one time I went up there uh, with, oh, Rock Lake. That's the other one I was thinking of that went with my dad and we went to Rock Lake. And so we hike in there. This, this you might, you know, relate to this. Yeah. It might be like a trip that you and I took one yeah. time or something. <laughs> so I go in there with my dad and we get to Rock Lake. Now, mind you, back in uh, the 70s, this is when that was, so now I'm aging myself a little bit. But back in the 70s, when I was a kid going uh, up there, um, we didn't have the gear that we have now. No, no. I mean, just think about, you know, we talked about the nice shirt and the nice packs you can get and Gore-Tex and and the nice hiking boots. Well, there wasn't any of that. We had nylon, you know, tents, sleeping bags that didn't have much insulation yeah. in them, you know. They just were cold. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Dad and I go into Rock Lake, and we get there. Beautiful spot. And uh, we were fishing with uh, something like the Smile Blade Fly, but they're just a, a woolly bugger, you know, just a fly. Yeah. And these same float tubes, these little uh, bobber float tubes. and. Uh, catching a lot of fish on those woolly boogers pretty easily you know mm -hmm. so it was it was fun we had a great time water's so clear you know you could see them fish coming up from the yeah, depth yeah. you know just like <laughs> coming right up there it was kind of going i'm gonna get bit yeah. you know it's always fun <laughs> yeah it's fun and uh so that night we went to went to bed i think we had a little campfire there kind of warmed up and it got cold so we get into our crappy sleeping bags 
and overnight it rained. Uh oh. You know, which is a common thing in the mountains. That's why you want to be very prepared when you go into any of our mountains here in the Northwest. They can go from sunny to rainy in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, quick. Real quick. quick. So we wake up in the morning and of course I was a kid so I, I was still in my bag and dad got up and he was trying to cook a little something to eat, whatever it was that we had. Yeah. And uh, I woke up and I was wet. <laughs> My sleeping bag was wet, <laughs> and there, you know, the old nylon tent was like this, and I think it was sticking to my bag. Jeez, uh, <laughs> that'd be horrible. Be freezing. So, needless to say, we packed up and left. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> One other time, we were at uh, Van Patten Lake, and I went in with a, a friend, um, Eric, and uh, we. I think my brother was with me too, and we were pretty small. It's not a very far hike to Van Patten Lake, and we get up there, and we had, you know, for our snacks, we had kippered snacks. You ever had kippered snacks? No. So they're like sardines in a can, smoked sardines in a can. Gross. <laughs> I would never eat that now. They're good. They're awesome. Yeah, you're weird. They're awesome. You put them on crackers, are good, except for, you know, you're packing this big, heavy can in. So we got this uh, bright idea that maybe it'd be a good idea to heat them up. Maybe it'd be better if we heated them up. Oh, uh, gross. <laughs> Did you just leave it in the can and heat them up? Yeah, in the so can? we popped the top and we had a little fire going there and we <laughs> and we heated these <laughs> kipper snacks up. And that wasn't good. And it didn't taste good and it and it smelled even worse. And uh, it was one of those times you like when you're at a lake, you know how calm they get? Yeah. You know how flat that lake was at Merritt? Oh, when yeah. We got up there, it was just flat. So the lake was just calm, flat. <laughs> and we. We uh, had cooked those, we're like, oh, it's a bad idea, and you know, put everything away. And so we went around the lake, and we were looking for stuff and trying to fish a different spot. And we got on the other side, and we we're like, man, I can smell them kipper snacks clear over here because it was wafting in the air. Uh, it was so still. Gross. <laughs> That'd be awful. You know, I would just left the lake. I wouldn't even deal with that. Well, anyway, so that was. A little bit like our adventure, I guess, to mm. merit. It yeah. didn't quite work out the way that we had hoped. Oh, yeah. Never never quite does, but, no. you know, it's always fun. No. You know, on some of those trips, we would just take uh, some fishing line, just wrapped around a stick. You know, as a kid, we'd take the fishing yeah. line, we'd just wrap it around the stick, and we would take a couple spinners and uh, maybe a woolly booger, and then that in a split shot or two and, and we just kind of stick it in the pocket and, and it's kind of like well in case we want to fish yeah because we weren't going there like you and i did yeah two fish two yeah. fish yeah you know? and so you'd get up there and then you'd you know put your stuff on and <laughs> off the stick you know <laughs> and, and hope you got a bite and bring it back in and then you know inevitably you'd break something off and so then you'd be searching around the lake to see if you could find if anybody left a hook. <laughs> Anything or something in a tree or <laughs> yeah. something from a bad cast. You know, uh, one thing that works really well, and we've talked about, you know, using this gear, um, but a natural bait works good. Uh, you can use like um, black ants or grasshoppers yeah. or you know, there's a variety of things you can find. They're kind of you know, what would be considered a natural yeah. bait, you know, up there. And those things work pretty well, too. Um, the other thing is you can try some uh, scents. You know, Procure makes some great uh, scents that, ha that are real sticky. You can take them in small bottles um, and then just put a little bit of trophy trout or one I like, believe it or not, is called carp spit. <laughs> and carp spit is a really good all around for kokanee and trout, and you just take some of that, and it kind of turns some of this um, gear into a, a better attractor yeah. uh, when you can when you can add a little bit of something, especially the fish are being finicky. So mm, that's yeah. another way. Try and pull them in. You know, when we go into the backcountry, a lot of times, obviously, I'm packing a video camera. It's important, you know, like for you, you're not always going to be packing a video camera. Maybe you are. Then a lot of them are smaller. But if you if you're not thinking about it, our, our cell phones anymore, yeah. uh, these smartphones have great cameras. Oh, yeah. And they take really nice pictures. And, I mean, GoPros are always getting cheaper, GoPros and, cheaper and cheaper. So are a great way to do it. But, you, you know, think about taking um, something with you on these trips because even if you uh, 
don't go there with the intent of taking in a whole lot of pictures. Just taking a few is important. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, memories. You want to make sure you remember those trips. Yeah, I still got pictures from Merritt Lake on my phone. Yeah, exactly. And they're fun to look at. And and so one, one of the things that we do is we produce a newsletter every quarter called the Northwest Lynn. And if you send me a message on email to info at heritoutdoors.com, I'll sign you up for the newsletter. And that newsletter on the front page every quarter, I give you a few photography tips to help you be a better photographer. And one of the things that I've talked about in the past is when you take pictures or if you take video, tell a story. Yeah. You know, tell the whole thing. You know, take some pictures at um, the trailhead. Yeah, showing you getting ready. Yeah. Take some pictures as you're hiking up the trail. Uh, find a pretty waterfall or a stream crossing that you rested at. You know, take a picture of that. Um, and then, of course, when you get to your destination, uh, just snap a few pictures. Yeah, it doesn't have to be anything like professional. Just take a few so you remember yeah, later. Exactly. So you're kind of telling your your story in a sequence. And if you, you know, if somebody. Uh, your family member or somebody you're close to couldn't go along with you, then you have a, a kind of a nice story to tell them. Yeah, it's a, almost like they came with you. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like it came with you. So I know that you and Michelle both have taken some really cool mm -hmm. photos of Merritt because it was so still. Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, and there's that um, right off to the rock slide, kind of like right next to Clicker, there's this giant rock. I mean, then you looked at it and you couldn't tell where the water was because the rock and the reflection just kind of seemed into one. So yeah. it just looked at like one big rock just sitting there like above the lake kind of thing. I know, that was so cool. Yeah, and they got some really nice pictures. And you know, these, these phones have filters on them. You can play around with them. Yeah doing a black and white or you can always get an app too to get an app to help you edit a little bit adjust the contrast you know they get really beautiful yeah oh yeah yeah you can always play around yeah. playing around with pictures is fun too people yeah. people don't understand that you just take a picture play around with it make it look real good yeah. you know, it's fun yeah like I say it's uh, like Tyler mentioned it's fun it's just makes it so that those that couldn't go or it's just like they were there well backcountry fishing is a, a great thing to do um, you know, look in your local area. I'm sure uh, for all of you in the Northwest or in the Western states and up into Canada, uh, you have lots and lots of really cool places yeah. to go. Uh, one thing that uh, Michelle has been doing is she she kind of has a goal every year to do some hikes. Yeah, so many hikes per summer trying to get every single Washington State yeah. trail done. She's trying to go on all these trails. You know, as outdoorsmen, one of the things you could challenge yourself with is you know, fishing at maybe 10 lakes, Yeah. you know, for the summer, you know, go out and find, um, get yourself a couple of good maps. There's a bunch of maps that are available at Sportsman's Warehouse. You can just pick those up when you're there and then just say, okay, I'm going to try to go to these and go on these little adventures. Um, they're really fun. Oh yeah. Just, they're really rewarding. It's, uh, you get away from people. Um, it's kind of back to the roots, so to speak, fishing from the bank. So the, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome being just away, like you said, away from people. It's just so quiet up there. It's just, it's really nice just being up there with your family or your friends or whatever. Yeah, you never know what you might see too. Oh yeah. In the middle of the summer, you might find yourself a good spot to uh, hunt high country bucks later on. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you might, but you never know what you might find. Oh yeah, you never know. And that might be another adventure to talk about. Um, yeah, so one of the things we may talk about in a future episode, well, we will. I think we'll tell the story of um, when my brother and I uh, met back up with a couple of good friends of ours that we went to high school with, and we went to um, southern Idaho for an archery hunt. And I think, I think you'd all be interested in that. And that was a, a time where we went into the backcountry to stay for like 12 days, mm -hmm. you know. So when you, when you do that, that's a... You have to come prepared. You got to be prepared. So maybe we'll talk about that in one of those episodes. So, yeah. well, that's probably all we have time for today. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of a lot of fun doing that, and uh, I would challenge you to do the same. As I mentioned before, make sure that you uh, subscribe to our Facebook pages. 
Uh, follow us on Instagram. We also have an Instagram account. And, and of course, uh, subscribe to YouTube here and make sure that you don't miss any of these episodes and as well as all the other videos that we put on there. So with that, we'll talk to you next time.